Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu last video of the morning. These videos come in the evening, the MCQ lessons they come. So, these MCQ lessons are uh, available every day and uh, these Hindu analysis videos are available Monday to Saturday. And today, a lot of information is there, so we will uh, not waste our time. And let's start the lesson, 5th of October it is. And important issues we are discussing every day. Additional information I am giving you and uh, please do not miss all these lessons. And it is all at your advantage that uh, freely these all lessons are available and uh, regarding the quality, regarding the level of the information and the pattern of the UPSC, you must compare and uh, please give your feedbacks also about that. Pocket News app is trending on Google Pay, you can download that and uh, regarding these courses the descriptions are given below the video you can call on these numbers and the website's address is given here chat section is available and here you will get the pdf and you will also get the telegram channel link you can follow me on instagram too and we'll start uh, with some words uh, these that i found today you can use that first important information in bhopal the capital of madhya pradesh the first e-waste clinic will come up now e-wastes uh, if you have watched that movie Wally. -E. it's a hollywood movie animated movie but the subject was really really excellent and the same issue was discussed there and they told uh, to the world that how this earth can be captured by e-waste and how the human civilization will come to an end just because of the e-waste issue and at that time this phenomena looked bizarre but uh, today i feel that uh, how advanced these people are and how advanced their thinking is Today, we are observing this situation because every other day, a new version of mobile, a new version of laptop, a new version of uh, uh, these uh, iPads, tablets, these are being launched. So, every year, these things are becoming uh, uh, redundant and uh, newer versions are coming. So, where this all waste will go because it is not useful anymore and uh, maybe some may sell them to some uh, second hand buyers and all but a lot of waste is generated every day every day thousands of mobiles or you may say lakhs of mobiles are becoming obsolete and uh, where this e-waste will go it is not only about uh, mobiles it is about all the e-products and you know we came up with the solid waste management rules of 16 and the e-waste rules also and the issue of extended producers responsibility was also associated with that means they will take some additional money from the buyer and uh, when that person will bring that instrument again then the money will be given back and this way they will recycle all the products but that's not a very very effective way because people will not want to give any addi additional money and in india you know if you give money to some person then uh, uh, rarely you are getting it back and it you do you don't know where the your where your instrument will be after some years and uh, for how much time you will use it and what kind of guidelines will be there so these things are problematic but now in this issue the e-waste clinic will be coming and uh, the bhopal municipal corporation and the central pollution control board they have joined hands here and they will be segregating the waste processing the waste disposing the waste and both from households and commercial units they will be collecting it so door to door collection will happen uh, and uh, the uh, various ways uh, they are uh, finding here but uh, there will be a three month pilot project first then if it is going to be successful then they will replicate the issue elsewhere in the country so that's really really an innovative idea very important idea and that is extremely necessary okay and people should take this thing very very seriously this is a very important issue of gs paper two and three electronic waste is a kind of a menace and you can be asked to write a essay on it you can be asked a mains question on it and how this thing is useful how e-products are useful how they are wasteful too and how we can manage the e-waste uh, 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 problem already we are struggling with the solid waste waste management and we are the we are one of the worst countries in this world in terms of uh, recycling the solid waste and here this is the additional e-waste and that's way more problematic because harmful chemicals and uh, metals heavy metals everything is present there so upsc may put a prelims question also that what kind of uh, uh, dangerous 
metals or products minerals or any kind of wastes pollutants can be found in e-waste so this question they have asked already in uh, 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 a prelims examination three years back but again they may ask you but uh, this information is very very important next issue is very concerning sedition case can be there against 49 people who were booked for sedition for entire lynching letter these 49 people uh, where uh, these uh, academicians were there filmmakers were there some uh, uh, social activists were there intellectuals were there so these are highly reputed people and leading people in the society and uh, their responsibility is way bigger than any other average person so it was very much obvious to write that kind of a letter because the mob lynching issues are extremely sensitive one of the worst thing that can happen in a democracy so it was very much obvious for these people to write this kind of a letter because the law and order situation that is not able to tackle that menace and even the ministers are garlanding those mob lynchers then uh, it is really very very necessary to do that kind of a thing but now these people are booked for that letter that how they dare to write that letter to prime minister of india that means there is a clear wave in this country who are in support of those mob killings and if they have raised a question on that if they if, and uh, actually they requested to the prime minister that you please uh, talk about this issue and you please uh, take some action here so that was a kind of a request and even on that request they are inviting a sedition law there so first we need to know about the sedition law section 124a in indian penal code it was brought by britishers and you see after the 1858 good governance act when they started uh, to rule her uh, rule us uh, politically and categorically then they brought ipc in 1860 for the first time and that was very much necessary to control the people of india so that there is no uh, uh, 1857 revolution again uh, on in, in India because that was devastating for Britishers so they brought these penal uh, provisions now even at that time they dropped this idea of sedition law because sedition law was all uh, uh, against Indians who wanted to expose these Britishers who wanted to oppose Britishers in any way and anything where they were opposing to the East India Company or the British uh, government there, then they did not want that. So in 1860, this idea was dropped because they were claiming about a good governance there. So this idea was totally against that. So that's why they did not bring the sedition law into provision. But after 10 years, they brought the sedition law again and it became a part of Indian Penal Code and it is still continuing. Even I would say it is a kind of a big mistake for Mr. Nehru also, where he talked about this issue. He said that, uh, 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 it's fundamentally unconstitutional and it would be best that we get rid of it as soon as possible but why did not he take he took uh, he take action uh, on that thing why did not uh, his government drop this idea but it was continuing and still it is being continued and the sh most shocking thing is that in this 21st century now this thing is being heavily used and uh, there is no discussion and this is totally a political targeting because the people who are asking any question to the government and you see in the 21st century where people have all the right to protest people have all the right to question people have all the right uh, like in terms of rti and all they may held the government accountable for everything and the cases like mob lynching they are something really shocking that this is happening in our society and we are not able to control that what then these governments are there for what the law and order situation is there for what the police department is there for if people are being thrashed by a mob what else can be there as a worse condition so that's why it's really really shocking that nobody was questioning that and when these people requested the prime minister these people are booked for the sedition law means nothing more shocking can be there in this country and openly we should accept this thing because uh, uh, this kind of blind support should not be there and this kind of blindness will devastate this country for sure but we are becoming so blind about these uh, uh, about these uh, uh, blind supports to the political parties that our discretion our logic our senses are totally lost what we are doing here and fir has been lost in mujafarpur bihar against these people so 
you see a present country's condition and it is very very necessary that uh, that we should comment on the situation here mr chinmay anand 48 videos were available but the the rape charge and all other uh, charges are dropped by the government there in the unau rape case issue you are observing what kind of progress is there and what just happened in that dramatic incident where whole family is lost for the girl and the girl is anyhow surviving and uh, what's going to happen we do not know about the future there is no big step that is taken and all kinds of efforts are going on to uh, tarnish the image of the girl and anyhow they are finding new ways to run different campaigns to justify the case of uh, uh, mr senger and anyhow they want to save that person and they want to justify that he is an innocent person and everyone knows about the incident how the whole family was killed in a dramatic incident like a movie we saw all these cases and other cases we have seen means these things are countable on fingers but other innumerable things are there in this country where no action is taken against the highest level of culprits the people who have charges of terrorism they are sitting there in parliament but who is inviting the sedition law these people who requested against the mob lynching issues what you can expect in a new india in a progressive india so is this something that we are inviting here as a situation and what kind of future we will have in this country where all kinds of dramas and uh, uh, hypocrisies we are observing and uh, it's a clear case of uh, intellectual crisis in this country means if anybody who would come from outside of this country who would observe this country's condition and these are official things means fir has been launched in sedition law uh, will be there then somebody will laugh at this country that what this country is up to what they are doing with this nation this great nation and uh, what is happening here so it is really really questionable the other article talks about the issue of uh, recruitments the unemployment problem we know uh, what's going on so there is no action on these things and here sedition law where life imprisonment can be there you see in this section 124a it says that if any person that uh, is involved in some hatred contempt or they excite or attempt to excite disaffection towards the government then they will invite the life imprisonment under the sedition law what kind of sentence is that means uh, uh, where this thing will be clear that somebody is trying to express some hate or excite some uh, disaffection or they are asking a question today this 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 thin line is lost and when somebody is asking any simple question even they are requesting then they will say that they are uh, uh, inciting the hate they are uh, uh, expressing the disaffection but against whom not against the country just against the government governments are the people who are accountable people but the accountability factor is lost in this country today they do not want to answer anything and uh, this is really really object objectionable a thing when somebody is requesting the government against a humongous uh, uh, level of crime and you are booking them for sedition charge really really shocking even mahatma gandhi balganga tilak uh, uh, during the british rule they were charged with sedition laws and in today's time the line is becoming very very thin and uh, uh, the discretion is totally lost the way authorities are behaving this is really questionable because uh, in this issue there cannot be any support because bob lynching issues what you do you think about that issue and the kind of response that we saw in this country how they tried to legitimate that uh, legitimize that issue and how uh, those people were garlanded all the charges were dropped against those people who incited a kind of a huge violence in western up there and the sedition charges are being there on these people in a different case uh, uh, where we saw that navlakha case is going on the bhima koregaon case is going on and there some people uh, the sedition charge is uh, there on those people but how we see the kind of pressure there on the judges means the judges they have uh, withdrawn from that case the mr br gawai it is uh, official now that uh, he dropped from that particular case he withdrew from that particular case he was not dropped he withdrew from that particular case means a clear pressure a clear uh, uh, fear like condition is there means they are not even ready to give verdicts on those those uh, those cases so what kind of country we are becoming 
it's it's a really really shocking and sensitive issue and a concerning issue if we do not take cognizance of these uh, things then certainly many great things about this country will be lost and the social fabric that is the most iconic thing for this country that is being the target here on these issues so here that's a problem and uh, i do not understand this logic that how they justify mob killings and how they justify the sedition law against these people who made this request so uh, that's some very very important issue in the mains question even uh, uh, they will certainly ask about the asset topic on this kind of situation and clearly the sedition law is the hot topic for mains questioning important for gs paper 2 and uh, asset topic also both next again a problematic concern we know on the security situations all the elections are being uh, uh, contested right now even in the haryana maharashtra uh, campaigns uh, the, the the situations of balakot and all these things are being used very heavily lok sabha elections the whole campaigning was based on that so these are the facts there is no doubt about that and uh, nobody can deny that although it's it, it should not be uh, uh, there and uh, this must not be used even some army officers they said that uh, do not drag the uh, army or forces into politics but they openly did that we saw all kinds of posters there all kinds of uh, uh, campaigns and rallies and everything was there on that issue now one issue was extremely problematic in that thing in media we saw all kinds of dramas there means way uh, away from the facts and they showed all kinds of uh, efforts anyhow make the public emotional we have no doubt on our forces their valor their courage and these are the highest level of uh, people in the society you may say because if they are sacrificing their lives for other people nothing can be better than that nothing can be more glorious than that but you see what what just happened here before the elections some allegations were there that we shot shot down our own helicopter mi17 there and we killed our own uh, six personnel plus one civilian there near uh, near shrinagar but that thing was not totally denied and a clear lie was there and no acceptance was there by the uh, by the officials there by the uh, forces now as the elections were completed results were out then we saw announcement that uh, uh, it was a kind of a mistake by indian authorities two officials were involved in that particular thing and they mistook this helicopter as a helicopter of enemy there is a system a friend and foe system which recognizes that this helicopter is belongs to india or the other country and they shot it down they said that this that day that system was off so i do not understand when the system was off how they can be sure about this issue that this is coming from pakistan or it is of india only but they shot it down and seven people six personnel plus one civilian those were killed and this was not accepted at all 0% acceptance was there, was there before the elections but after elections it's a clear case and now it's a big official announcement that uh, uh, they are accepting is it as a big mistake and uh, this was shot down by india only and we will take action against those officers you see mistakes can be there an extreme level of mistakes have been there in the past uh, in the history of this world but the kind of role of media that we saw and the kind of campaigning we saw in the elections sidelining all the important developmental aspects and employment economy all the troubles were uh, uh, sidelined sidekicked and the security issues they remained up front and here this issue could have been a huge problem for the campaigners the people who was uh, putting stakes of their uh, uh, elections of their candidate candidacy on those uh, security issues this could have been a big big blow but they never accepted this thing and now it's a announcement because elections are over so very important issue and uh, uh, situations are really concerning in this country because uh, the kind of incidents we are observing there are many good things but the kind of bad things we are observing in this society those are unprecedented and those are seriously concerning and the role of media i always say is it's a kind of a biggest blow to the democracy here next issue uh, the president's 
power under article 72 where they can absolve any criminal of all the offenses and uh, that can be set free by president even if that person is awarded a death sentence even that person can be freed by the president of india so a uh, 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 simple data is coming here that since 2010 20 death, death sentences have been committed to life imprisonment recently the uh, case of uh, rajona singh uh, we saw who killed the bayan who killed the chief minister of punjab bayan singh and uh, a kind of amnesty was given on 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi so the death sentences were commuted to life imprisonment so these uh, uh, respite uh, remission all these uh, important powers of the president you must revise again in the polity chapter and uh, under article 72 we know about these powers of president and article 2 to 6 these are the powers of governors means governors they can commute these death sentences and uh, uh, they can change these uh, uh, sentences which which were awarded to these people so remission despite all these powers are available to governors too but governor cannot set free a person who is awarded a death sentence that's a simple difference there and the most important difference there governors of the state they cannot totally absolve of any person of uh, a death sentence but a president can so these powers uh, uh, were used and uh, now this issue uh, came up front with the rajona's case but this these this these this informations are extremely important from the political point of uh, sorry the polity point of view in the upsc and the uh, notable people who were given death sentences here yakub memen 1993 afzal guru uh, who was involved in 2001 act and uh, azbal kasab who were involved in 2008 act so all these people were given death sentences after 2010 so Uh, uh, uh they are in the that list but 20 death sentences have been commuted to life imprisonment commute commutement means uh, uh you change that important award the punishment award instead of death sentence you convert it to the life imprisonment there so that's the issue and uh, informations regarding these things were taken from uh, rti so rti is also very important issue here next issue a very very important one microfinance institutions which give loans to the poor people for their uh, small businesses or maybe some uh, other needs here thresholds are there these rules are being changed means the people in the rural areas who are earning more than 2.5 lakh people they will not be given these uh, collateral fee free loans but the people who are earning below 1.25 lakh rupees annually per annum they will be given collateral free loans in the semi urban areas people who are earning uh, less than 16 1.6 lakh rupees per annum they will be given collateral free loans and the people in the urban areas proper urban areas if they, if they are earning less than 2 lakh rupees per annum then they will be given these collateral free loans so these conditions are being changed and they are trying to promote the uh, promote the help for uh, these uh, the, the the institutional help for these uh, poor people and the collateral fee fee loans free loans are given them okay so this is a important formation and uh, the nbfcs who are also uh, some of the mfis who lend and uh, the credits are given for many many purposes so everywhere these applic- uh, these applications will be there. so it's a very important point for mains means how uh, uh, what kind of steps government is taking to promote the financial inclusion and the credit opportunities for poor people next charging infrastructure you see in the july july budget announcement e vehicles were promoted heavily and the more important component was the charging infrastructure now a important guideline is coming where they say that in the mega cities there will be charging stations and a grid of 3 3 into 3 km every uh, 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 grid of it will have a important charging station and on highways on the sides of high- highways both the sides every 25 kilometers these charging sta- stations will be available so charging st- infrastructures are uh, not available heavily in india today we need to establish all these infrastructures and uh, 
higher production of electricity is the ultimate need here and the charging infrastructures the land acquisition for that and all these things will be needed there so where these filling stations are there their numbers will come down and the charging infrastructure uh, uh, stations will be going up in the future but it will not happen very very soon in phased manner they will do do that first phase will be there in next one to three years second phase from three to five years and later that will be spread to whole country means the whole issue will take around five to ten years it's a long term goal there and uh, this will start right now after these guidelines but uh, some basic needs are important here and some changes in the uh, uh, in the electricity consumption issues will also be there because many of these charging stations will be there uh, inside people's homes or or in their uh, offices and all because uh, that will be very much uh, helpful all these people they cannot come to these roads to charge their cars and vehicles and all so uh, private charging facilities will be there some subsidies will be expected and this whole issue is very futuristic and important next we will come to the articles now first article important for gs paper two and three after two months again according to the uh, rule after uh, two months uh, rbi reviews this uh, situation and since february they have been revising these uh, repo rates which is there available as a tool with rbi and the only tool which is being used by RBI today in practical terms and it is deciding about these rates uh, in an autonomous manner. You cannot say that uh, uh, RBI is working totally in an autonomous manner. In other things, things are really problematic. The RBI reserves were uh, 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 transferred and many other problems they are observing and the decision making is not there totally in the hands of RBI board. But here, this tool practically is there in uh, is in their hands and they are using it heavily since february and this this observation was, was done by many economists there now they say that we are we have come to a particular limit and below that they cannot go because now it is uh, uh, there at uh, 5.15 percentage because 25 basis points revision is there it's a kind of a, a lowering of 2.25 percentage in the repo rate there so we were at 5.75 we came to 5.40 in starting of august now 5.15 is the new number so all the speculations are gone now and 25 basis point is the new revision there since february it is the revision of 135 basis points means 1.35 percent is are being lowered so rbi has also sharply mark down the gdp growth projections and that's really a, a shocking number means from the projection the estimates for uh, the gdp growth numbers sharply from 6.9 percent to 6.1 percent straight 0.8 percent difference so this revision is is being done by rbi and they now say that we may grow by 6.1 percent and we all always know that how much pressure is there on these official numbers and uh, these th all things are political always in the media these scrutinies will come so very soon we may have revisions in 6.1 also because in the quarterly growth we saw it is close to five percent and how that can improve very easily we all know about that because it's a challenging situation and all the sectors are struggling a lot Although it's a festival season, so there can be some improvements, but uh, it is not very easy. So for this fiscal, RBI is revising these growth numbers as 6.1%. And it was just August month when they projected 6.9%. And within two months, they are saying 6.1% only. So that's really concerning. We needed to grow more than 8%. That is the need for $5 trillion economy. But here, they are coming to six, around 6%. So that's really concerning and uh, heavy lifting in last few months in this monetary policy decisions means uh, 135 basis points revision that's really a huge thing and they may expect uh, many influencing growth prospects but these things are practically not uh, available there means the investment is not rising with that much pace government decided 
that the corporate tax structure and all all these things uh, are a change and a heavy cut down is there in the corporate taxes so what's happening here government cut these taxes corporate taxes the biggest share there and 1.45 lakh crore rupees will be the loss to the government in the tax receipts so government is losing the receipts there and here is the expectation that government must invest now government must do the expenditure just opposite demand is there means there is a lack of receipt and there is a demand of expenditure from the government because the limit has come by the rbi that uh, below five percent they cannot go so now it is the time that government has to spend here and here government is losing 1.45 lakh crore rupees with the uh, with the corporate tax revisions so that's really a contradictory situation what government is going to do we have to see and that's why uh, government is again demanding additional 30,000 crore rupees from the RBI. So the situation is really, really concerning and uh, best professional people are needed on the job and uh, best decisions must be taken. And on the demand side, they need to do something. They need to invest uh, a lot here and the private investment is virtually stagnant. So the government's push is needed. Government's expenditure is needed. So what they are going to do, we have to see. And uh, many people fear that more investment targets will be there and there may be some tax revisions also because the situation is becoming really out of the hand because even the gst targets are not being met means uh, uh, in the september month it is 19 month low collection of gst 91000 uh, uh, and uh, and something crore rupees only and they expected that uh, it will be more than 1 lakh crore rupees every month but it is 91000 so they are short of target every month now so that's why a concerning situation and these all things are happening where inflation is under control under the target crude oil, crude oil prices are also uh, supportive again there was a spike in mid september but again it is in control and the food prices are also on a softer side so though these all problems are there when the situa situations are very much normal and uh, uh, these things are favorable if we leave aside the world trade growth so it is happening now so there there can be very problematic future in the near uh, 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 future situation because these all things may uh, uh, may be going up again the crude oil prices they may go up again very soon saudi arab has uh, 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 warned about this thing so the crude oil prices they will go up food prices they may go up and uh, and the inflation that will certainly rise so all these three things will will build down negative very soon so what's going to happen at that time when today things are favorable and we are struggling a lot what's going to happen next so very concerning situation and for the uh, paper two and three this article is very important next issue important for gs paper two and a very concerning situation the education sector of this country and especially the education after the schooling really gloomy dark situation is there in this country hardly any investment is there in the infrastructure issues of state universities and the uh, common uh, education platforms there if we leave aside iits iims and some prestigious institutions some are uh, institutions of national importance if we leave them aside then there is rarely any support but if we talk about those institutions even the iits are struggling now one article is there regarding the recruitment processes and that's really really concerning so many things are negative and many times many of you people you ask me that uh, how we can write this much negative here but i cannot help here because the situations are really really problematic and the hindu is on a mission to expose all these things so that's why many many negative articles are coming but you see it is not about being positive or negative it is about being factual and here the fact is that these problems are in front of us we are heavily affected by that we are affected by unemployment we are affected by the the extremely problematic role of media we are heavily affected by the uh, the aggregate in crisis and the bad situation situation in the education sector and the health sector so these facts you have to write there but when you will write about these facts then only you can write something as a solution uh, uh, on the positive note so you have to balance the answer positive things you will be writing but 
these positive points will be emanating from these facts only it is not being negative here it is being just factual here you you accept the facts and you will know the solutions there so the solutions will be coming out of these facts only these are not negativities please do not misunderstand these things because things are really problematic as i explain these important issues today like the tradition issue and other issues then these things are facts and the solutions will be there when the, we will have the solution of these problems that they must not be there then there there must be efficient management of those things so that's why the answer will be, will be balanced in that way so for p p paper gs uh, 2 and 3 this issue is extremely important a web of deception issue is related to, related to the neat examination wherein when it was introduced heavy protests were there from the especially from the state of tamil nadu so now a kind of a huge revelation is there and that's really intolerable in this challenging situation of this country where students are committing suicides on a daily basis because there is uh, a very gloomy situation very hard working students are not getting passed and when they see that uh, uh, less hard working and uh, some frauds are getting selected and they are becoming doctors engineers and they are getting jobs nothing can come can uh, come as a satisfaction to these people to these students who are very hard working who are very honest and they are struggling every day and the competition is rising every day here what just happened some students some rich students they used some other poor intelligent uh, students who could score very well in the neat examination so they hired those people they paid lakhs to these people to these students and they got passed and this is how uh, admissions uh, uh, they were too much in number in private medical colleges too so some of them were selected in the government medical college some of them in private medical colleges and the numbers of these frauds they are now observing that their numbers are really huge and huge revelations are happening every day and they say that it turned out to be a tip of the iceberg when they cast a student who gained his seat through subterfuge by having someone impersonate him at the neat examination means we know there is a, a, a problem with the admit cards picture means th these are not clear so they took advantage of it and they sent some other student instead of the uh, instead of the uh, original candidate there and the appearing student was intelligent and uh, he or she passed the examination and this is how they got the seat so the parents the students and the authorities they all are under the radar and uh, very soon huge exposures will be there but the writer said that they should not cover this issue and this should be all open because this is really concerning an issue we have seen the vapam case and till date we do not have any satisfaction in that case many people were killed like a movie because all were the important testimonies there those people could tell all the truth but those old people were killed and in a streak we saw those kind of killings now we can understand these all things are sponsored simple people they do not have that much courage it's a, it's all nexus there and medi mediators were involved there and in this neat examination now this revelation is really really concerning so they should not tolerate it the national testing agency first we should know about the nta national testing agency it was uh, uh, proposed and cleared by council of ministers in 2017 november and it is working since and it conducts some examinations like joint entrance examination main je mains and the uh, the neat for undergraduate courses and the national eligibility test net examination for the lectureship and the cmat and gpat examination for management and the pharmacy courses so these are being conducted by the national testing agency and it is chaired by the eminent educationist who is appointed by the government the ministry of hrd and a governing board is there so they all take the decision there and they pushed this neat issue and they were in totally favor of it now people have brought different uh, solutions which are really devastating because they are de devastating on the poor students who are really working very very hard but they are not getting selected because of those fraudsters so now uh, they must not tolerate this issue it should be uh, 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 coming out all open and uh, there must be the strictest action against those mediators especially
नेक्स्ट द इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल ऑफ द डे वुहान समिट इशू देर विल बी अफॉर्मल इनफॉर्मल मीटिंग बिटवीन जी जिनपिंग एंड मिस्टर मोदी इन द सिटी ऑफ ममल्लपुरम ममल्लपुरम इज लोकेटेड साउथ टू चेन्नई एंड यू मस्ट नो अबाउट द पल्लवाज रूल देयर पल्लव डायनेस्टी वॉज देयर एक्सट्रीमली फेमस फॉर द महाबलीपुरम शो टेम्पल्स एंड द पिक्चर यू आर ऑब्जर्विंग द डिसेंट ऑफ गंगा अर्जुन टेम्पल द द द Draupadi Temple, all are there, and it's the it's under the list of UNESCO's World Heritage Site. Capital was Kanchipuram, south to Chennai, and this was the Pallavas Kingdom. The time was third century to two seventy five CE to ninth century, eight ninety seven CE. So from third to ninth century, for around six hundred years, they ruled there. Mahendra Varman one and Narasimha Varman one; those were the kings. and throughout their region they were in constant conflict with both chalukyas of badami badami is located here and these are the, these were the chalukyas in the northern karnataka region so conflict with chalukyas of badami in the north and the tamil kingdoms of chola and pandyas in the south you can see this is the map of 625 ad so pandyas there in this region madurai region and cheras there in uh, uh, kerala region and here these were pallavas so a very conflicting phase very struggling phase in the northern part of india mitrakas were there in the gujarat region uh, which was a uh, malwa plateau region kalachuris were there uh, in the central region kalingas in the odisha region and uh, uh, the uh, the, uh, the varmans and uh, here late guptas because it was the time the last time for hindu dynasties in the north india so it was the empire of harsh 625 ad was the year and uh, it's a huge region so this was the situation of pallavas and the mamallapuram now a security pact was there at that time between the kings of pallavas and the kings of china they wanted to win the tibet situation and they took the help of these kings so that's why the city was extremely important this pact was signed here so the writer said that they have chosen this venue very smartly and it will convey a particular message to the, to the chinese premier there now doklam issue happened in 17 after that the wuhan summit happened and at that time china agreed to an informal summit in 2018 in wuhan and that was considerably uh, very much skeptic India was skeptic China was skeptic about this issue because the doklam was uh, 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 happened in 17 and after some time some months this meet became as a important landmark because many things were solved in with this Wuhan summit and a kind of a positive environment was resumed between India and China otherwise the situations were really going in a dangerous way so this uh, came out very good with some challenges and uh, geopolitical and economic issues they remain there with both the countries right now but we as a country india though beset by host of economic woes but india seems better positioned today than in the spring of 2018 means uh, the challenges are there but we have improved a lot in our international relations with us russia japan and other other countries and uh, we have become way stronger in those things in russia especially we have uh, announced uh, the line of credit in the far east region and that has bolstered our ties we have done s400 deal so that was also a great balancer between the the tri triangle situation of uh, us russia and india so there we came stronger with america many positivities are there and uh, uh, many announcements were there the how the event that just happened so many things came positive for india now china will have to think about those situations and it's a kind of a pause that it has to take that in which way it will respond here because the pakistan situation is going on china indirectly supports pakistan there we all know about that masood azhar's case was there where uh, it was a kind of a setback for china where they were bound to declare masood azhar as a uh, uh, international terrorist china tried to block it many many times but uh, in the end masood azhar was declared as a terrorist there 
so all these things came as a setback and already the trade war is going on with america so china is facing a lot of challenges right now domestic situations are also not very happy so at that time when the wuhan summit happened china was riding the crest of wave of achievements now there is a wave of negativity so a kind of a frustration is filled in chinese administration now when they have chosen this symbolic uh, 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 place of uh, mamallapuram so it conveys a message that it was a security pact hundreds of years back now we must again go on the in the same way and there must be pacts between india and china relations must improve as i always say if russia china and india these three countries they come together on a same page then there is no power in this world which can subdue uh, uh, this trio and it will be a asian century for sure in a much better way and in a largely cooperative way we will certainly rule this world mean ruling means in not a negative way but uh, on the trade uh, uh, basis on the uh, uh, geopolitics basis if these three countries come together then it can be really the greatest one but usa is always wary of the situation and it will never want india to go with russia and china and that's why it always try to woo us with many many things it always try to attract us in these challenging situations because the power of usa is, uh, is diminishing uh, uh, day by day we all know about that many challenges are uh, coming for the trump administration too so china uh, want india more and more away from china uh, uh, sorry uh, america wants india more and more away from china and russia so that situation is always troubling in asia now in afghanistan as we discussed in an article and some experts said that uh, in afghanistan there is a kind of a great chance for india and china to work together in a cooperative manner but practically china is trying to uh, kick here and it wants india out of the game because the presence is certainly problematic for pakistan and uh, china would always support there so that is why when we look at asian security scenario regional stability scenario and role of the us in this asian region then the views and the ways of india and china they are always contradictory a contradictory outlook that persists and that stops both the countries from coming together and cpec is becoming a new challenge for china because uh, uh, there are many problems with many countries and it is not going according to their expectations and already we denied to uh, uh, to uh, participate there in cpec and that is the biggest trouble between india and china relations so china wanted the most that india uh, becomes a part of it because india is the biggest country after china and uh, china certainly wanted in india to come on board but we uh, uh, denied that thing because of the sovereignty issues and the land that it was using that was pok officially claimed by india so that's why all these problems are still there cpec we have not joined that we have not been uh, we have not been very much uh, positive about it till date and more and more problems are coming in pok region and pakistan's uh, conflict is uh, uh, becoming larger and larger and that's why it will not be very easy to come on board or to come on same page with uh, uh, india for china a mood of pessimism is certainly there and other additional issues like the hong kong protests are going on we have made comments about that tibet situation is also not controllable and the xinjiang the uyghurs muslims issue and some human rights issue these are also uh, 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 creating troubles for china internationally so heightened anxiety is there domestic scene is also not good and the mood of pessimism is there so the frustrations they may turn out to be very much uh, uh, provocative for china if any step is taken by india which is provocative right now we have taken some steps here like a recent announcement by uh, announcements by india for all arms integrated exercise in changtang prahar uh, uh, the name of changtang prahar in super high altitudes of eastern ladakh near the xai chin so that can be very problematic for china china will certainly look at this issue very suspiciously and we announced that in arunachal pradesh vijayanagar we will reopen the advanced landing ground so these things uh, uh, may turn out to be very provocative for china and in this phase of frustration and pessimism china may be indulged into 
some kind of adventurism as it did in doklam issue and that was a problematic for india and uh, uh, the result is only the better relations with between india and china more challenging situations for both because they both cannot go on a open war and more problems will be there for both the countries so it's not good but in this phase we must go with a lot of caution this is something as a message writer wants to convey here treating with caution writer said that uh, recently 17th anniversary was celebrated by china the prc and uh, uh, it was 1949 and it is 2019 but china is very much aggressive today and all, with all these challenges like the hong kong protests president jinping used very stern voice there and it said that uh, 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 obliquely we are seeking a reversion to the maoist period of struggle to achieve victory so we need to be uh, victorious in the future too and uh, we will crush all the hindrances there one china policy will be uh, uh, will be the ultimate goal here and that will be executed so india can try and seek answers on how to deal with today's china from the wisdom of the orient means uh, there is a pattern since the ancient times and we must go with that means we cannot make enemies and we cannot we, we cannot fight wars there and these informal summits they are extremely useful we must take the fullest advantage here and we must exploit these opportunities nicely and wuhan summit was good this also must go very very good but the situations are extremely sensitive today and uh, uh, any small mistake can lead to some kind of new problem for both the countries so we have to take care here a lot china is frustrated it's a kind of a, uh, it's a kind of a better face for india internationally so uh, 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 that that thing should not be proposed a lot so that china is not uh, egged very much and it is not provoked a lot and it will not go any kind of uh, uh, it will not go for any kind of misadventurism there so it's a opportunity but it's a kind of a challenge too and it should not be worse than wuhan in any sense we must exploit here so i'm going to stop the lesson here and one article is left we will take it tomorrow thanks a lot keep watching uh, it was amit sani